In this video, we are going to do some refactoring of the code we've already done. So uh, let's have a look at this forgot password. Uh, if I try and reset my password, let's just quickly submit the form. You'll see that what's going to happen if I open my email, uh, the token is 2DCE and so on. Because what we're doing when we're actually resetting the password, if I open the user model, you'll see that reset token simply puts the email address of the user into this MD5 function, which then returns the MD5 hash string. Now, what's going to happen next time I'm going to reset the token? Let's try again. You'll see that the token, if I open that here now, go back, open both of these messages, you'll see that the token is exactly the same. So as you can see, anyone who knows the URL for the reset password or registration activation page, uh, could easily uh, do it without actually receiving any email. Just put the email address within the MD5 and append it to a token, which is definitely not something we would like to allow. So let's go back to the editor. And what we're going to do is replace all this, this MD5 with email, with the function called unique ID. And we're going to uh, call this method uh, function without any arguments. So now if we test it, if we go back to our forgot password, if we test it with the same email address, uh, now if we check our email, there we go, we should receive it in just a second. There we go. So as you can see, token is completely different. It's shorter, but it's unique. So if you have a look at this, and now if I try and reset it again with the same email address, and if we check our email, there we go. You can see that now, obviously, this uh, string is different. The beginning is similar, but then the ending is completely different. So that should work a little bit better. If you would like to add even more, then obviously you can still use this MD5 and append this email. So let's do that, email. And if we try with this, the string is going to be a little bit longer as well. So if we try again, forgot the password, same email address, submit. And if we check our email, there we go. The string is now longer. And obviously, this is definitely unique because the ending of the string is MD5 of the unique email address on a system. There won't be two same uh, two accounts with the same email address. So just this is already uh, unique. But then we also prepend this unique ID uh, result to it. So the number this this string is definitely going to be uh, a unique. There won't be two accounts with the same token. Okay, so that's uh, one improvement. Now, next thing, if we go back to the editor, close this user uh, uh, class. And what I want to show you as well is uh, if we open these controllers, I mean, if, if we start with the register controller, one thing that I want to get rid of is uh, this, uh, this method, if we scroll down, to send uh, email and together with the message body. Because we are using very similar approach, if you have a look at this forgot password, we also have the send me email and then message body. It would be nice to have perhaps a component that takes care of it. And then rather than calling this send email uh, and then send email then calls this message body, perhaps we could just uh, instantiate new class and then call method send on it or something like this. And then all this is going to be done outside of the controller rather than polluting this controller with additional method. So the way I'm thinking about doing this is to have a, some sort of uh, event dispatcher, say, at any point, if I want to trigger something, I can just call this event dispatcher, pass it an object, and this object will then trigger, I mean, this dispatcher will then trigger given method on this object. And it may be just a single uh, event, sim single job that I want to dispatch, or it may be a collection or array of, of, of jobs. So to start with, let's just open this utilities directory. And under this directory, I'm going to create event directory. And within this event directory, I'm going to create a new class called event dispatcher. And it's going to be within app then utilities and then event uh, namespace okay and this class uh, will have a method uh, public method dispatch so public function dispatch and this one will take events and will be either array or a single job that's why i'm not type hinting this uh, with any uh, data type okay i'm going to add some dog blocks straight away here it will take param events which will be 
either job or array of jobs and now we don't have job yet so under the event let's create this interface this time it's going to be an interface and we're going to call it job again it's within the same namespace app utilities event and it's an interface and now this interface this simple interface will have just one method requirement which is going to be public function handle we want to handle given job when we are uh, passing this job to this event dispatcher it will return mix because we don't know there might be different jobs they may return values some may just return void uh, it may be anything that's why return mix and now handle the job for the uh, summary of this uh, method okay we can close this save and close this uh, interface now back in our event dispatcher and for the summary we are going to say uh, it's a uh, dispatch job or jobs and then it will return mixed as well because we uh, it might either return boolean for, from when we're going to be calling array walk on uh, if if this argument is an array otherwise it may return whatever the the method this handle method of the job will return so we're going to start with if with if is array events then we are going to delegate it to this multiple events and we pass these events as an argument otherwise we return this uh, single event and we also pass this events through now here we need to add return statement and now we need to add this multiple events method and then single event now for multiple events we know this is array so we can type hint it and we are going to do return array walk and we want to walk through this event and uh, the callback we want to use is going to be within the same instance of the of the object within this uh, event dispatcher and the method will be called single event so basically we are delegating this to the single event method and here what i'm going to do is simply return uh, and now this event here I'm going to actually rename to job and I'm going to type hint it as job so it's going to be an instance of this job and it's going to be called job so job and then handle method we know obviously this contract requires this handle method to be available from any instance that implements this uh, contract this interface that's why we can call it straight away here okay let's add some dog blocks because that's our event dispatcher completed so this one will return boolean we pass in the array uh, handle multiple jobs and then for this one handle single job and it will return mix because we don't know this handle method can return anything okay so that's our event dispatcher done now for us to have access to this event dispatcher uh, probably the best thing will be to register this dispatcher on a container so let's open our public directory and index.php and right before this uh, bind mail after the guard let's duplicate this line and we're going to call it event and it's going to be instance of a new event dispatcher there we go let's import this class as well so we have it right at the top here so now if we go back to our controller we can save it and close it we can also close this event dispatcher now if we go back to our controller from within the controller what i'm going to do is scroll up to the top and uh, right after the container guard request after the request i'm going to cre create a new property called protected event and it's going to be an instance of the event dispatcher make sure that obviously that class is now imported here as well and I'm going to move it to the classes for our application and, and now from within the constructor I'm just going to duplicate this request rename it to event and we are pulling the event instance from the container here so now we have this event available right at the bottom of this controller I'm going to add a new method just to help us so that we can easily dispatch any event we want from within our controllers so the method is going to be a protected function dispatch and it will take a, a an event or events so I'm just going to call it events and from here we just return this 
event instance and then dispatch method passing the events through as an argument. Let's add some dog blocks here. So it may return anything. So it's mixed. Events might be an instance of a job or it might be a ray. And then let's just add here the dog block dispatch events. And if we scroll up to the top, make sure that obviously this job is also imported here. Okay, if we can, uh, we can now save and close the controller. Now, the first job that I'm going to create is going to be within the new subsection here. I'm going to create notifications directory. And within this notifications directory, I'm going to create the first one, which is going to be activation email. And it's going to be within, oops, once again, activation email is going to be within app and then notifications directory. Okay, and it implements job. So now, now that we're implementing this job, we need to add this uh, handle method. So let's quickly add the implementation and let's go back to our register controller method. Now, from within our send activation email, we are first resetting the token, then we pass in the instance of the user to the send email and send email then takes care of uh, distributing the email, obviously uh, getting this message as well. So what I'm going to do is to copy whatever is inside of the send email method and uh, paste it within the handle method here. And now from within this handle method, you can see straight away that we first of all need to import obviously this .envs to have access to these uh, variables. But then we have a container that we need. We need user as well. And later on, if you have a look at our message body, we also need the request. So I'm just going to cut this entire method, this message body, and paste it within this activation email job. Now uh, import this user. Actually, we won't need the user now as an argument because we will have access to the property user and this is going to be because I'm going to create a constructor and this constructor will take instance of the user first of all then it will take instance of the mail as well this app utilities mail and it will take an uh, instance of the HTTP uh, request illuminate HTTP request so a request and let's uh, update the dog blocks and let's initialize these fields all three of them so now you can see we have these properties user mail and request so when we pass them through as an argument to this constructor they will be associated with these properties and because of this we will have access to this mail so now we don't have to pull it from within a container we can simply uh, i'm just going to remove this first line and i'm going to uh, call return this mail and then add from and so on. Now user now becomes this user. We don't have to pass user as an argument because we have access to it as a property. So now from here, we can call this user, but rather than token, I'm thinking we don't really have to reset this token before we pass it to the send email uh, method. In this case, basically, we are going to remove the send email method and call in dispatch this activation email. So what I'm going to do is call this user reset token from within this activation email. So now reset token because reset token, as you may remember, it resets the token, saves it to the database and then returns it. So we can do it all in one go here. Now request we have access directly to as well because it's been sent through as an argument associated with our property. And that's everything within our activation email. So we can save and close this file back to our register controller from within the register controller. We can now remove this sent email and our send activation email what we should do now is call this dispatch method and pass this event so new activation email and this activation email take these three, three arguments first one is the user instance second one is the instance of the mail component so this uh, container make mail and then the last one is going to be instance of the request so i'm going to duplicate this last line and replace mail with the request. So we're pulling the mail and request from the container and passing it as arguments to this activation email. So that's, as you can see, this has now allowed us to remove these two redundant methods, put them in a separate class, which takes care 
of this whole email distribution. So if we now save the file, open our .env, make sure that verification is set to true. So we actually receive this activation email. I'm going to close this file, open your database, make sure that the record with the email address that you're going to be trying to register, obviously I've got one here, so I'm just going to truncate this table to make sure that this record does not exist so I can actually register again. Now back to the register form, hit on register. That should now send email the same way as it did before. So if I go back to my uh, mailbox, you can see emails here, I click on activation token, everything works as expected. Now I'm going to be able to log in, hit return and there we go. I'm now logged in and redirected to the dashboard. So now back to our editor, another controller that uh, should probably uh, use this uh, approach would be the forgot controller, which is the second uh, case when we actually distribute an email, when we send an email to the visitor. Uh, let's go back to this uh, forgot controller. We have the same message body. We have sent email here. So let's, what I'm going to do actually, I open this activation of uh, one thing I've noticed, this handle here uh, doesn't return mix. It actually returns integer. So let's uh, uh, make sure that this return statement uh, has integer here. And what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this entire activation email class. And so copy, and I'm going to create a new one called reset password email. I'm going to copy the name. So now the new class has been created. Obviously make sure that the class name is also changed to the same as uh, as the file name. And now I'm going to reorganize this uh, uh, use statements here to make sure that they all grouped a little bit differently. Uh, the outside uh, packages together and then application specific uh, together as well. Okay, so reset password email it takes exactly the same constructor, same properties, same job. But if we go back to forgot control, I'm going to close the file browser on the left, I'm going to split the screen here. What we have different here, if we look at this handle method against the send user is the subject subject changes here to password reset request, it's going to use user email name as well. Exactly same thing. Now message is going to be different. So what I'm going to do is cut this message from within the forgot controller, paste it within overwrite basically uh, over this existing one within the reset password uh, email. And I'm just going to close this uh, move it to this window. So we have everything in the same window. There we go. Now message body does not take any argument because we have a property user already. So now let's change it to this user reset token and everything else stays exactly the same way as it is. So now this job is also uh, finished. So we can save and close this reset password email from within the forgot controller. We're not going to remove this sent email because this is actually the method that's being called from within this post. As you can see here, if send email returns false, then we add to error and throw the exception. So back to this send email from within the send email, we are going to return this uh, dispatch and we want to dispatch the job new reset password email. And this one takes the same argument. So user, then this container on the contain from a container, we want to get uh, the mail component first, and then the request the same way as before. So mail request. Okay, so that's all from within this uh, forgot controller. If we save and close this file, we can close this register controller as well. If we go back to the browser, let's now log out, go to the forgot password and see if it's going to still work just fine. And if we now check email, there we go, password reset, seems to be working fine. Let's just put password to password to update. That works fine. If we now try and log in, uh, password two, and there we go back to the dashboard. Now, one last thing before we finish this course, uh, I want to show you that this remember me uh, option also works. If we try and log in without this option, so password two, hit return, and we are redirected to dashboard. Now, if I try and click register, it takes me back to the dashboard, same for forgot password or login, because if once you are logged in, you shouldn't be able to access these uh, sections. Uh, now, if I close the browser completely, so Command Q on the keyboard on the Mac, and now reopen it, 
and navigate to our project, you will see that I'm now logged out. But if I try and log in with this Remember Me this time, hit Return, I'm logged in as well, but if I open the console here and then application under the cookies for this login dev, you'll see that we have this remember me with the value of our of the token that has been now saved with my record. If I go back to the database, refresh the record, you'll see that remember me token has now the same value here. So now our system can identify me next time I'm going to open this browser and navigate to our login.dev. If I now close the browser, command Q on a keyboard and now reopen it, Chrome, and navigate to login.dev, you'll see that I'm automatically logged in and go straight to the dashboard. So this remember me token works just as expected. So we can now obviously log out and once I've logged out, now if we check if we still have this cookie, you'll see that this cookie is gone. And next time I'm going to try and log in without using this remember me uh, and password to you'll see that when I close the browser, it will log me out. So command Q, reopen Chrome login.dev and you'll see that I need to log in again because when cl I've closed the browser, the session has been removed and obviously I'm no, I'm no longer logged in. So this is the last video of this course. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, perhaps, please use uh, the comment section under this video.